Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. You ready to do another fantastic painting with me? Drag out your paints and let's get started. We've already got the canvas up here and we've got it covered with a nice thin even coat of the liquid white and it's all wet and it's ready to go. So let's have them graphically run all the colors across the screen that you need to do this painting with me. And while they're doing that, let's go on up here and get started. Tell you what, let's make a pretty little sky today. I'm going to start with a little touch of Prussian blue, Prussian blue, black, and the least little touch of yellow ochre. Black, blue, and a little touch of yellow ochre. Let's add a little white to that so we can see what we got. Maybe just a little bit more of the yellow ochre. Like that. Makes a beautiful little color. Don't go crazy with the yellow ochre or you'll end up with a bright green color. Okay. Wipe off the knife. Grab a two-inch brush here, and I'm just going to tap the two-inch brush right into that color. Just tap it right in there, like so. Okay, let's go right up here. Let's just take and just sort of twist in a little sky here. I'm just using little circular strokes, just sort of letting this bounce around and play wherever, wherever. Just leave little places open, but just very quickly, just using little twirling motions, just sort of drop in a happy little thing here and there. Maybe a little bit down here. See how quick that goes? Wherever you want it. Just make a decision and drop it in. There we are. And we just sort of mix it up. Just blend it all together and have fun with it. And while I have that color on the old brush, let's have a little water in this painting. So I'll go right back into the same quarter, same color. Same color. Tongue got over my teeth there and I couldn't see what I was saying. There we go. Now let's just pull this right across. Straight across. Like so. And then maybe like here. I don't know exactly where we'll have water in this one, but somewhere. Somewhere. I love water. I would put water in just about everything that I do. Okay. Now then, let's wash the brush. Wash your old brush in odorless thinner. Shake it off. And I have a box down here that I shake the brush into it and <laughs> just beat the devil out of it. Now with a nice clean brush, I'm going to go back up in here and just very quickly just sort of wind this up and blend it together. You still have light and dark areas in the sky and that's what I'm looking for. I don't want a sky that's just one flat old dead color. Now here, all the way across, very lightly, pull all that together. See? Now I'll just use the same old brush. I'll go right into titanium white. I'm going to really pull the brush through the paint. Just get a lot of paint on the brush. Let's go right up here and decide maybe there's some happy little clouds that live in this sky. See? I don't want real distinct clouds. I just want some indication. So I'm just going to just push a little color right in there. Maybe, yeah, maybe right here there's a nice cloud that just, he floats around and has fun all day. To me, clouds, clouds could very well be the freest thing in nature. And when you're painting them, paint them that way. Just let them go. Let them have fun. Let them have fun. Okay, now then, I'll wash the brush. I just like to wash the brush. Shake it off. <laughs> and I just, I just covered the studio again. Now then, just very lightly, all I'm going to do is just sort of blend these. I don't want to, I don't want to blend these all the way. I just want to sort of blend them, lift them here and there. Lightly, lightly, lightly. Don't want to lose all these little actions that we created. Isn't that a fantastic way to make a super little sky in just a second? Okay. Today, let's try. Let's try a round brush. And I'm going to go right into the same color, same color that we made the sky with. Just tap the brush. Tap it. Maybe I'll add a touch more of the black. Okay, just tap. All right, let's go right up here. I want to make some little background trees that are far, far away. So start right in here and just begin tapping in some very basic shapes. All we're looking for is just general shapes. 
We're not looking for detail. All we want is just the very, very basic shapes. And you put as many or as few as you want in yours. Just sort of, just sort of drop them in. And with that same color, I'm pushing downward now. I want to drop some of that color right into the water. Look at there. That'll end up being our, our happy little reflections. Without cleaning the brush, I want to add a touch of yellow ochre and just come right around. And I just want to put a, a tiniest little bit of highlight here and there. Don't overdo. This is too far away. A little Indian yellow. Too far away. Don't want much. Just to create the illusion of individual bushes here and there. You could even add the least little touch of the bright red. Not much. Very little. Very little. Just, just enough to sort of make them stand out. This little round brush makes some of the most super delicate little leaves. And you're just using the top of the brush. Just the top bristles. Over here, maybe a few little happy things. There they are. Okay, see there? Wasn't that easy? Now let's make some reflections here. Let's grab right here and pull straight down. It's important that you pull straight down. Straight down. And look at that. Look at that instant, instant reflections. Boy, I used to go crazy trying to do reflections when I was a traditional painter. I turned the canvas upside down and just worked myself to death. And now, you just give it a little downward pull and off you go. Going back into that same old color, and to that I want to add a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. Same color, same color, a little bit of Van Dyke Brown added to it. And let's go right in here and just tap in just a happy little thing like this. Now these little things just create planes, different layers of depth in the painting. And they just really make your painting exciting. When people look at it, they just won't believe the number of different planes that you have in it. There, pull straight down. Once again, see that creates a reflection. Go lightly across. And look at that. Now, with the knife, right into a touch of the liquid white. Just a touch. Pull it out very flat and cut across. Pull it out. Let's do that again. Pull it out and cut across. So there's just a little bit on the knife. Flat cross. Okay, let's go right up here. Now then, I want to put some water lines back in here. This does two things. It's a little light area between the darks, and it cleans up the bottoms at the same time. And you can sort of bring everything together, just like so. And you can make them some big, some little. Just rub them very firmly. Very firmly. See how it's already creating different levels, different layers? Maybe there's one right here. Look at, the, look at the distance you can create just with these little water lines. They're sneaky, a lot of fun to use. There we go. Now you can take just the clean point of the knife and here and there just scrape in the indication of a little, little trunk, a little stick, a twig, here and there. Just however you want them. Okay, good. Oh, round brush is so much fun. Let's go back to it. I'm gonna take, let's go into Van Dyke Brown. Reach over here, I'm gonna pick up some black. A little touch of blue, not much blue. Okay, let's go right back up here. Now maybe we begin, we can begin building things forward. I wanna, yeah, right here. Oh, just a happy little tree that lives here. But maybe this tree, maybe this tree's closer to us, so he's bigger. He's a bigger tree. He's stronger. He may be no bigger than these, but he's closer to us, so that, that makes him look bigger. Okay, and needless to say, we'll want a reflection in the water. So let's just do that while we have the color on here. And at this point, you don't have to make any big decision on where, got a hair there, on where the reflection and the real thing meet. We do that later. Right now all we're doing is adding in color. All right. Put a touch of crimson into that. Crimson and black. A little touch of blue and just tap. Tap that brush firmly. Okay. 
maybe over on the other side here. Shoot, oh, we got this old brush going. Let's drop in. Notice I start at the bottom and work up. That way the tree or the bush, whatever you're making here, is darker at the bottom than it is on the top. And that's the way it would be if you went out and, and looked at a tree because more light's gonna come through here. Down here there's all kind of undergrowth and there's a lot of things that would stop the light and create deep dark shadows. Real dark shadows. And so you start here and as your brush runs out of paint, you just go up, up, up. And all we're looking for here is just the basic shape. We're not worried about detail at this point. We'll worry about that in a minute. Some crimson and some black and a little touch of blue. Maybe right in here. I'm gonna mess around and cover this whole thing up. But that's okay. As long as you as long as you have fun and you learn from it, nothing is wasted. Any time that you practice, it's not wasted. If you're gonna be good at anything, you have to practice. That's the price you have to pay. There we go. Okay. Let me find my liner brush. We'll use the old liner brush today. Go into some thinner and right into my Van Dyke Brown. Now I want to make this paint very thin, the consistency of ink. Turn the brush, that brings it to a nice sharp point. Turn it. Okay, let's go up here. Let's have a happy tree trunk right in there, like so. And you can put as many or as few limbs as you want. We're going to put leaves on this, so a lot of it's going to get covered up. So you don't have to worry too much about it. We'll go right on the other side here. Let me get a little more thinner. Got to keep this paint very thin so it literally flows off your brush. Can add some dark sienna to that. A little more thinner. A little more thinner. There we go. Paint is literally like water. Maybe, 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 maybe. Let's put one. Goes right up there. Now, one of the questions that I'm asked over and over is do you start at the bottom and work up or the top and work down? Doesn't matter. You do it whichever way works the best for you. Try both ways. And for some people, you'll find one way works good. Some people will find the other way. So you can start out here on the small part and bring it in toward the trunk. Or you can start at the trunk and work out. Just however. You do it the way that works the best for you. There are really no set rules. You find what works for you, and that's the way that's right. That's the way that's right. If it makes you happy, then it's good. If it doesn't make you happy, ooh, bad news. Okay, maybe there. And you can put as many or as few little these limbs and branches out here as you want. But the big thing is keep your paint very thin very thin. If it's thick, it won't flow. And you'll work yourself to death trying to get it off that brush. Keep it thin. Add a little more thinner there. And we'll have another little stick that lives right here. See? You can just put as many in there as you want. And just wherever. And a lot of these little sticks help create interesting things that are happening in your painting. They're very nice. Very nice. I tell you what, let's take your old two inch brush today. So often we avoid this big brush. I'm going to add a little brown to it, dark sienna. Just, I want to put a little color in the bristles. Then I'm going to go right down here whew, to the yellow. Right to the yellow. The only reason I put that brown in there is just to keep this yellow dull down some. Tap. I'm tapping very firmly. Very firmly. Let's, I'm going to reach over here and grab a little sap green to throw in there too. What the heck? Sam green, the yellow, yellow ochre. Grab some Indian yellow. Okay, let's go right up here. Now then, I want to begin putting leaves out here on this beautiful little tree. And take the corner of the brush and just tap. Just tap. Now, work with patterns and shapes here. Just don't throw these on at random. Think about, there's a limb in there that holds them up. Put your darker color on, just like so. See, it's just sort of working little patterns here. Don't, don't just... Throw them in at random. I know sometimes it looks like there's no thought that goes into this. It, they're just dropped on. But each, each little bush and each tree is an individual. He has his own personality. They're like people. They're 
different. They're unique. You have some that are big, some that are small, tall ones, skinny ones, fat ones. They're just like people. There, see? Just layer after layer after layer. And the more layers you have, once again, I know you get tired of hearing me say it, the more depth you'll have in your painting. And to me, depth is very, very important. I'm going to put a touch, just a touch of the bright red with that. Just add something right in there. Just a happy little bush. Okay. Now I'm going to grab another brush. I have several of each brush going, so I don't have to spend all my time washing brushes. And I'm going to pull straight down here. Hold on. This is where you have to make the big decision. Pull straight down and then go across. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Instant reflections. That easy. That easy. Okay. Now, back into the cad yellow. Using the same old dirty brush. Now then, I'm going to go over on this side and begin just dropping in the indication here and there of all kinds of of little green things, little bushes and little trees. We don't have to define exactly what all of them are. They're just pretty. All kinds of little bushes. But just the corner of the two inch brush, it's all you're using. See, all the yellows, a little touch of red. All kinds of little things, just let them happen. Let them happen. I'm gonna grab some lizard crimson on that same brush. Shoot, I might as well get crazy. Let's go right up in here, and we'll put a few little things right in here. Right in here. Touch it. See, just all different colors. Just let them vary back and forth. Shoot, we can hit some greens and... There. Jack Frost has touched some of these, it looks like. And you're getting all of these beautiful little colors and shapes, sometimes on one tree. You can have a multitude of colors. Just an unreal, unreal. There's a few little things. Just lives right out there. I like can see. Them. Okay, I'll give you an idea of how you can make some super little things. Now let's take let's take some Van Dyke brown here. Pull that paint out very flat, flat as you can get it. Cut across. Small roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Let's go up here. Now then, maybe there's some land that lives here. Just let that knife sort of bounce along and touch and play. And you can make this quite thick. Quite thick. Like so. See there? Isn't that super? And we take some dark sienna, a little Van Dyke brown and white, and then just let that sort of bounce along here. And that'll come right along and just put highlights all over it. Makes it look like little stones and dirt. And, mm, all kinds of little things. Now with a fan brush, we can come right back. We want to bring some grassy things down here. So I'll just take a fan brush and load it full of the various colors, the yellows, the greens, and all of those colors. Load it quite full of paint. Okay, let's go up here. Now, take the corner and just push upward. Just push upward. It'll make it look like little grassy areas that are just flowing right down. I'm gonna add a little more sap green to that. And if you have trouble making it stick, add a little tiny, tiny bit of paint thinner to your brush. See all the little things? And that it kills those harsh edges, brings everything together. Now then, back to our liquid white on the knife and go right in here, see there, and put us in some little, little water lines and just let them come right around here. And this is, once again, is where you clean up the bottom of that, bring it all together. Maybe there's a couple of mountain here. Then with a pointed knife, you can go in here, drop in a few little sticks and twigs. These two help create different planes and create the illusion of distance. There we go. Good. That's coming right along. Let's go back into our Van Dyke Brown and <laughs> let's have some fun today. Maybe 
let's do something. Maybe there's a little waterfall that comes down here. So if there is, watch here. Let's put some brown in here. Got to have something to contain that water. It comes right out. Bloop. It's Van Dyke brown. Little, looks, yeah, there's a little dark sienna in it. Whatever happens, whatever. Look at that. Just right on down. Maybe there's some dirt out here. Wherever, wherever, wherever. You can do anything on this canvas. Anything. Okay, the paint is quite thick and it's quite rough at this point. Shoot, let's just keep going. That's fun. Maybe waterfall, we'll put it right in there. So we'll bring this down. Right over like so. Just like so. And this, this you could put on with a paint roller. It's no big deal. I'm just putting a lot of color in here. Just like so. Just like so. Thick paint. Very thick. Very thick. Now yeah, then. Now we have, I have white, titanium white, a little touch of the blue, some of the dark sienna, a little touch of the Van Dyke brown, but none of it's over mixed. Let's leave it very rough. Now I want to just sort of bounce this along. Just let it bounce. Let it bounce. Don't drag it straight. Let it bounce. Get rough. Say, get nervous. If you got a if you got a little twitch, you're ahead of the game right here. I've had people in class tell me that their hand shakes and they they can't do this. Shoot you to you, you've got an advantage. Use it. Use it. You know, speaking of classes, I get hundreds of letters wanting to know if we teach classes. I I don't do too much teaching anymore. We have teachers that we send all over the country. And they'll come to your area and teach. My son Steve is one of those. <laughs> the old man gets lazy, he sends them out and I stay at home. Now then, we were gonna have a little waterfall in there. A little bit of the liquid white, titanium white. Gonna reach up here and grab a little bit of blue. Just mix it all together. Let's go right up here. Maybe this water just comes right down through here. Just let it bounce right over. There it comes. There it comes, right on down, and then, shoom. See, just a little waterfall, like so. Just let, let that fall over. There. Now I take the little knife, and I'm gonna take just a little touch of the white paint, and just sort of let it skip along here. See there, that makes it look like water. Just barely, barely, barely. Just zipping right over. with a fan brush and go right out here and just sort of clean up the bottom and, and let it pick up some of that color and work right on out here. See, a few little splashes here and there. Right on out. Let's have some fun. Let's get crazy. Take a big bunch of the Van Dyke Brown on the knife. Big bunch. In my mind, I want a tree. Ooh, it lives right there. Big tree. Boy, he is a big tree. Big old tree. Let's give him an arm right here. He's got an arm that lives right there. And I'll take some of the highlight color and just let it flow right down. Look at there. See there? Mm. We'll take a little touch of green, and we'll just put a little bit of grassy areas all down here by his little foot, like so, here and there. See, that sort of pushes that waterfall back in there. And with a little brown, maybe there's a nice tree that lives right here. And I drop a few little highlights on there. See, that easy. This little round brush is something else. Just a few little highlights here and there. And it helps push that waterfall back here. Pull this down and it'll, there. See, makes it look like rocks there. Okay, now it's time to get crazy. Time to get crazy. Maybe there's some, 
light that streams through here. And back in here, we have some nice bright leaves. And add a little white to that. See, make these just sparkle back here. They're hanging down on the other side of the tree. I should have done that first. And now I gotta go back there. That'll push them onto the other side. Let's take some sap green and a little brown, load it onto the big brush. And let's put the indication of all kinds of nice leaves and stuff that hang way over like this. There they come. Just as many or as few as you want. Wherever you think they should live, that's exactly where they belong. Okay. Big old tree. Hmm. And you're saying, after you did all that work, then you go in there and mess it up. I think you'll like it. I'm gonna add a little paint thinner to my brush. I'm gonna go right into some green and some yellow ochre. Load a lot of paint into the bristles, a lot of paint. Let's go up here, and then we can begin just tapping in some highlights. Don't overdo, keep this quite dark. It makes it very nice. See there? All kinds of little things. Just like so. Then you could go in here and drop in a few little limbs and stuff and really make this look like a beautiful, beautiful tree. The old clock on the wall is telling me it's time to leave you for this week. So I'm going to call this painting finished. And from all of us here, happy painting. God bless. Production of this program is made possible by a grant from Michael Stores, serving America's heartland, and the Martin F. Weber Company.